Welcome to Photo Escapes, a photography series featuring professional photographers Matthew Williams Ellis and myself John Alexander. We take you along on our journey, photographing some of the most amazing locations in the world. In this episode, we are in London. We've come up with what we think is the perfect photographer's day out in London. We start our day by stalking the skittish fallow and red deer in Richmond Park. It's got its breath coming out of his mouth. It looks awesome. Before heading into the city, where we create our own stressy street photography challenge. We have no idea where to start with any of these. Then we photograph a graffiti artist in the tunnels of Leak Street. Yeah, that's it, that's cool. Before ending our day photographing St Paul's Cathedral as the sunset. The orange lights of St Paul's, the blue ambient light, absolutely perfect. Okay, we're in Richmond Park. This is our first stop and we're going to do some wildlife photography. I actually haven't been here before, but I'm quite excited about it. You've been here, haven't you? I absolutely love it here. I've been here loads of times. It's my favourite spot for photography in London, without a doubt. The early mornings are a bit painful, but I think we're going to get some sunlight. So hopefully once the sun rises, we're going to get some great shots of the deer. Yeah, I think we just need to try and find some now. Hopefully we're just going to have a look around and try and find some. I mean, some. it's actually not hard. There's some literally right there. <laughs> Cool. Right. Simples. <laughs> Let's go photograph them. Let's do it. Okay, this is my first shot. The sun hasn't quite come up yet, uh, but we've got a really cold morning today, and we've got some ferns and some leaves here that are just covered in frost. And I'm really excited to try and take a, a sort of abstract shot, almost like a, a zoomed in texture. Hopefully that texture really works. Oh, the sun's just come out now. Yeah, this is not as good anymore, but we have got loads of deer around us now, so let's go and photograph some deer. That's why we're here in the first place. Richmond Park is the largest of the London Royal Parks. Three square miles of prestigious English countryside on the outskirts of London. It's one of the most protected areas of land in the UK. Fallow and red deer are just some of the inhabitants that live within its boundaries. Today, there are a couple of photographers hoping to capture this unique place. So we found loads of deer but the problem is they're not in the most photogenic spots and a lot of them are in the shade. Yeah. So we're kind of just going to carry on looking to try and find some in a really photogenic location. As we walked through the woods, I spotted a potential subject on the edge of the tree line. Okay, this is awesome. There's a male fallow deer just off here, and it's perfectly backlit by the sun. It's got its breath coming out of his mouth. It looks awesome. This is what we've been waiting for. We've seen loads of deer, but the light here is amazing. These fallow deer are so skittish. The red deer are much easier to photograph, but I think I got the shot. Matt having bagged his shot, I then spotted a large red deer herd in the open grassland. I'm just crouching down in this long grass. I've just seen a herd of deer just out in the open here and I'm gonna try and get as close as I can without obviously disturbing them. They're quite skittish because it's just been the culling season, so it's quite hard to get you know, up close and try and get that portrait that I really want, but hopefully if I lay low and be patient, 
Hopefully I can get close enough to take that dramatic portrait of, a, of this stag just here. Photography aside, it's so amazing being here. It was such a nice day today. And it is actually amazing how close we are to, to London when we've got these wild animals in front of me. But they're a bit too wild for my liking. Let's try and get a bit closer to them. That was hard, wasn't it? That was, that was much harder than I thought it was going to be. You said you can get really close to them. Honestly, it's normally much simpler than that. They just seem really skittish, probably because it's cutting season and all their friends have been shot. Ah, um, yeah, fair enough, I suppose. OK, so now we're off to do our second type of photography, street photography, and we're going to South Bank. There's so many things to photograph on South Bank, so hopefully this should be much easier than photographing in Richmond Park. Yeah, yeah it's going to be good fun, actually. I'm looking forward to it. Just a few stops on the tube brings us out into Westminster Station, just a short walk from South Bank. So we've just gone to South Bank and we're having a little break just before we start photographing South Bank itself. But we thought we'd do a little challenge, didn't we? Yeah, try and make it a bit more interesting. Rather than just photographing anything we come across, we've come up with six techniques which we're going to pick out of the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how we have to photograph South Bank. So, should I go, go, go first? OK. There's one here that I really don't want. And I don't want which to get that. that. F8. Movement. Can't read your writing. Movement. Oh, that's a good one. OK, so something like slow shutter speeds. Yeah. Cool. That's, okay. that's one that's actually not too bad. That's okay, a good that, one. That's a good yeah, one. Isn't it? Yep. Right, first one. 60 seconds. Ooh, oh no. That's the good one. So 60 seconds, we've decided that at any point when John says, I will have 60 seconds from then to take my shot. So it doesn't matter where you are. And I can I decide when? So if it's a really like annoying spot that you don't want to do it, I can go 60 seconds. Yeah, I think so. All right. That's part of what makes it the challenge. Yeah, yeah. It's like the forfeit one, isn't it? Okay, okay. go. Don't get F8. Contrast. That's a good one. Okay. Iconic London. Okay. Oh, that's easy to do in a really boring way, but hard to do in an interesting in way. way yeah. No. Abstract. So I know oh. which one you've got. This means I've got F8. Should we go take some shots? Yeah, I think so. Having lost rock, paper, scissors, it's Matt's turn to go first. Right. F8, 60 seconds, and iconic London. I literally have no idea where to start with any of these. This is so um, This isn't really an F8 shot, and it's not iconic London, and it's not 60 seconds. Okay. That could have been cool, but it's not working. So I need more people for this to work. So I'm going to head up onto the bridge where there's constant traffic and try and make some order out of the chaos up there. Right, because I'm doing F8, I'm looking for somewhere where there's lots of interest throughout the frame. So I've got down low and I'm hoping to get a couple of silhouettes as they go past here with more people off in the distance. But it's just a bit of a waiting game now waiting for the right subjects to come past. Right, I actually feel genuinely quite stressed because we haven't got long to do this. My next one I'm going to try is Iconic London. And as we're close to the London Eye, I guess I'm going to have to go and try and take an original shot of that, which I think is probably impossible, but I'll give it a go. Okay, right, I actually have no idea what I'm going to do. I've got drab light. I've got a gigantic structure in front of me, no interesting foregrounds that are unique. I'm completely stumped. A 
Okay, right, got an idea. There's no man looking at this people taking a picture of water. <laughs> I can't believe I'm having the piss taken out of me by a street performer over there for taking a photo of a puddle. I mean, he's actually quite right, to be honest. Why the hell am I taking a photo of a puddle? But I found my iconic shot. Right. I've got House of Parliament in the background, people, lamppost, all silhouetted in the foreground. Just got to wait for the right subject to walk past. I'll just do this. I'll just the it's a good shot. Yes. You like it? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds from now. 59, 58, 57. trying to time it perfectly with the doors so it's all completely symmetrical. Wow, that was really stressful. Uh, uh, that was non-English. Right, so it's my go. I have got contrast, movement and abstract. And I've got half an hour, same as Matt. Uh, that way. Right, my first one, I'm going to try as abstract, I think. Hopefully I can do that first, get that out of the way. Okay, I think I look probably a bit crazy, but actually I'm going to photograph this yellow paint that's splashed onto the floor. And what's, got, what's really nice is that you've got the contrast between the darks and the lights. Uh, so I'm going to try and focus on a bit where there's no disgusting chewing gum <laughs> and try and get just a really nice arty shot. Do I look cool? Do I, I think I look cool. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so I think I've done my abstract shot now. I'm quite happy with it, but not, it's not amazing. Hi, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, hey, go, go. Let's go. <laughs> right, so literally about 30 metres from where I just took my abstract shot, I've got a movement shot to do now. And we've got these skaters here that are just going past me. I'm going to use a slow shutter speed in order to get that movement to capture that action. So, on S, put it on about 30th of a second, wait for a person to go on this jump. I'm, I'm trying lots of different shutter speeds. I'm trying slightly slower shutter speeds around 20th of a second, and then going a bit faster to about 50th of a second, and seeing how much motion I like. Right. Okay, my last one is contrast. How am I gonna do contrast? Contrast between light, light and dark. Contrast between new and old. Contrast between color and non-color. Let's go this way to try and find some contrast between, <gasps> bird, contrast that with something. No. Contrast, contrast, the contrast between warm, and cold. Something will hit me there, I'm just going to keep walking. Something's going to hit me. Having nearly hit a child, I think I finally find my next subject. Okay, I've seen this lamppost on this bridge and we've got Parliament in the background. Obviously I'm trying to do contrast and I'm not sure that this is technically correct, but there are contrasts within the image. We've got the contrast of dark and light, so that's contrast. We've also got the contrast of verticals and curves, that sort of contrast, and also got the contrast of movement and non-movement. <laughs> so I can't think of anything else, so I think that's three bits of contrast. So I'm going to try and take this shot and try and put all of those elements together. I think I'm not cheating.
for our next challenge, we've come to the Leak Street Tunnel. A free for all for graffiti artists to practice their art on the old Victorian brick walls that line this incredibly atmospheric tunnel opposite Waterloo Station. We met up with Ed Worley, who kindly let us take some photographs as he creates his piece. I think I want to get a shot with Ed within his artwork. So Ed, if you wouldn't mind, if you could do that with your with your t-shirt, yeah, to make it look really cool. Yeah, that's it, that's cool. And just look So my plan's a bit different. Yeah. Now you're going to get to actually paint, which is what you want to do, rather than staring into John's eyes. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to capture some candid shots. Yeah. I might kind of semi-direct you a little bit, no but basically just go for it, yeah. um, and we'll start from there. All right, cool. Awesome. Okay, so I've got quite a few setting the scene shots that take in the whole of the artwork. So my plan is now to do a few more close-ups, maybe close-ups of the can, and also get a bit of Ed's face in so we actually know who it is, who is uh, who's doing the work. As the light diminishes, we walk down the Thames path for our last challenge. The grey skies mean that there was not much of a sunset, so we decided to make the most out of the blue hour and photograph St Paul's Cathedral from different perspectives. Weirdly for London, Matt goes to the beach. So we haven't got a sunset because the clouds all rolled in, but this kind of scene looks nice whatever the weather when it comes to the blue hour. Just after sunset, this kind of scene, the orange lights of St Paul's, the blue ambient light, absolutely perfect. I'm doing a shot from quite low down, so I've got the bridge coming into shot from above. I'm going to do a vertical panorama to make the file size as big as possible so it could be printed off the size of a bus or something. I have to say, it is so nice after the chaos of chasing deer in Richmond Park, running around South Bank like headless chickens trying to get street shots to just kind of be here, no rush, get the shot, tripod out, it's much more calm. I'm really enjoying it. Okay, I've set my shot up now. And it's actually a bit embarrassing that I'm taking this photograph as a professional photographer. I'm meant to be trying out new, you know, new compositions and I've come here to where everyone knows. But it is a pretty epic shot. I've got the leading lines of Millennium Bridge and obviously we've got St Paul's in the background. It is just good. It got, it's got all the compositional elements to make a good photograph. And what I'm doing, I'm actually taking quite a slow shutter speed here. If I use a too fast shutter speed, then you just see all the individual people and it makes it look quite cluttered. By rendering it down to about half a second to a second, those people go into a slight blur, which gets a really nice movement and energy into the photograph.
we've had a fantastically varied day photographing London with mixed success. Each location had its own unique challenges. But you said you can get really close to them. 60 seconds from now. But for an action-packed day photographing London, we returned with a really diverse portfolio of images. Well done us. <laughs>